Yeah, we'll start uh, today's class. Uh, so in the last class, I guess we were discussing some problems on random variables and random process, right? And also some of you have requested a few problems. Uh, first, we'll uh, go through those problems and then uh, time permits, we'll go through some other problems, okay? So, uh, can you see my screen? I think I will share. Can you see my screen, right? Yeah, fine. So, some of you have asked a few problems. Let us solve some of them and then uh, we will uh, try to see other problems. So this question was given in get 2014 ECE set 3 for two marks. The question is as follows. A fair coin is tossed repeatedly till both head and tail appear at least once. So the average number of tosses required is so the question is, so if fair coin is tossed till both the head and tail appear at least once. Okay. That means we have uh, a coin toss. So it's a fair coin. That means probability of head is 1 by 2 and probability of tail is 1 by 2 and it is tossed continuously so that at least uh, one of the coins, sorry, uh, at least once the tail and head appears. That means at least once you should get head and tail, or uh, tail and head, anything can be okay. Till then uh, the coin is tossed and after that uh, it, it will be stopped, okay? So what we need to find out, the average number of tosses required means we are tossing so how many number of uh, on an average how many number of tosses required we need to find out that means expectation we have to find out let the required random variable let is the required random variable x is the random variable is what uh, the number of tosses required okay na? the number of Tosses required to get at least one head and tail. Okay, x is the random variable. That is the number of tosses required to get at least one random variable. Okay, then we need to find out expectation of x. This we know, right? If x is a discrete random variable, because here is nothing but the number of tosses, 1, 2, 3, 4, like that number of tosses. So can somebody tell me what is this? i equal to from 1 to infinity, x into P of x, right? This is what probability of mass function. Last class we discussed, right? Probability of mass function. In case of continuous random variable, the expectation we have seen, right? Sigma minus infinity to infinity x into fx of x dx. This is PDF. So here i equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. Actually, in this coin case, it is from i equal to 1 to infinity but in general minus infinity to plus infinity yeah now what we will do so what are the possible uh, uh, outcomes we will see to get at least one head let us say one head and one tail i'm just tossing the coins so one case is let us say first i got head so first i got head 
I'm tossing. Let us say first case I got head. Okay. That is not sufficient. I tossed again. So then I got maybe tail. This is required one, right? Head and tail at least once. Maybe I'm tossing. Maybe I got head. Head twice. Then the third time tail came. Okay, just I'm tossing. What are the required probabilities I'm telling? I'm tossing. First I got a head. This is not the required one, right? That is only head. So the next one is, let us say, I, I am tossing. I got head followed by tail. Okay, that is the required one. Or else, let us say, first I got head, head, then tail. That means this is the required one, head and tail. Or else, head, head, I am tossing four times I tossed. First three times head I got, fourth time tail I got. So this is another possibility. Or else, head I got five times, four times, then tail I got. So like this, infinite probabilities are there, right? You may get head and tail, then head, head followed by tail. You got it, right? So how, what are the number of, uh, what is the random variable here? Number of tosses, here two tosses, in this case, three tosses, four tosses, five tosses, six tosses, up to it may go up to infinite tosses. Sometimes it may happen. You have been tossing continuously. Head, 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 you got. 100 times head you got. 100 and first time you got tail. That is a required one, right? So this is one case. Or else first I got tail. So for, let us say first I got tail. Uh, you can see see my screen, right? And you can hear me, right? Okay, fine. First I got tail. Maybe, but this is not the required one. Let us say I'm tossing. I got tail followed by head. This is also required one because in the in the, in the question they said at least one head and one tail appear at least. The order they did not mention, first tail, then head, or first head, then tail. Anything can be possible. Or I am tossing, first two times I got tail, the third time I got head. Or else, first three times I got tail, the fourth time I got head like this. That means, in this case, what are the number of tosses required? Two tosses here, three tosses here, four tosses, five tosses, six tosses, like this, up to infinite. Anything may be possible. Okay, so it's a random experiment. We cannot uh, uh, know how many are required. That's why we need expectation. That's what they are asking, the average number of tasks required. So for the required event to happen, what is the required event? At least one head, one tail we want, or one tail, one head we want. This to happen, at least two tasks are required, right? At least two tasks, obviously. Head and tail we want with at least two times we need to toss. That is there. Okay. Now these two uh, single number of tosses. This is not uh, like feasible. So leave it. So let us say the first case I am taking. I am expectation I, I want to take. So one case just I am showing here. Let us say X number of tosses and probability of x i am taking okay what are the possibilities i am just uh, uh, taking head and tail that's what we have seen right head tail sorry head head tail or head 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 tail or head 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 tail like this right two tosses three tosses four tosses five tosses now, what is the probability is first time you have to get head. So probability of head is equal to probability of tail equal to half, right? So first time you want head. Second time tail. 1 by 2 probability first time head you will get. 1 by 2 probability second time tail you get. Or else first to two times 1 by 2, 1 by 2 probability is head you will get. Then third time with 1 by 2 probability tail you will get. Or else 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 
three times head you get fourth time tail you get in this way 1 by 2 power 4 times head you will get fifth time tail you get in this way right now what is the expectation for this this is one way now the second way is what just now i discussed uh, x p of x let us say let us say first you are getting tail followed by head tail tail followed by head tail 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 followed by head or tail power 4 followed by head just now for simplicity i am writing tail power 5 followed by head so number of heads are 2 3 4 5 6 6 something like that sorry number of uh, tosses so 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 same first you have to get two tails followed by head three tails followed by head like this so now this is the this one now expectation is what the expectation or average number of tosses required is sigma x into or xi into p of x i this is right this is the expectation now both are same see first head then tail that is same as first tail then head both will be equal that's why can i say write that two times of for first one i will do then i can multiply with tail two times okay x into p of x so two heads into what is the probability when two heads into what is the probability 1 by 2 square right 1 by 2 square or three heads into 1 by 2 two cube right 1 by 2 cube plus four heads into 1 by 2 power 4 up to so on up to infinity have you understood till here if you have any doubts you can ask me how we have written this up uh, mothers also either you can message or else you can unmute and uh, just uh, answer it not an issue okay this question somebody has asked okay but it will be helpful to others that's why uh, i am teaching this you can feel free to ask and stop me when you have any doubt okay if you are okay till here then we need to simplify this that's it so you can take 1 by 2 common from all uh, this expansion then 1 by 2 if i take common i will get something like this 2 plus sorry 2 into 1 by 2 plus 3 into 1 by 2 square plus 4 into 1 by 2 cube plus so on up to infinity is there now what i am doing is see here uh, okay this one this 1 by 2 this 1 by 2 gets cancel now what i am doing here is i am just adding one and from this subtracting one okay this i am doing i am just adding one and subtracting one why i have added like this means you might know these expansions 1 minus x whole power minus 1 binomial expansions when mod x less than 1 what is the expansion hope you know this 1 plus x plus x square plus x cube plus x power 4 plus so on up to x power n up to infinity this you know i guess similarly if you differentiate both the sides for this expansion differentiate both the sides what you will get something like this right 1 minus x power minus 2 equal to what you will get 1 plus 2x plus 3x square plus 4x cube plus so on up to infinity this is the infinite uh, series expansion right now if you observe our uh, uh, expansion it is same as like that right 1 plus 2 into here let us say uh, x is 1 by 2 3x square 4x cube plus so on up to infinity right so this i can write as 1 minus 1 by 2 power minus 2 
that's why i added one and subtracted one this subtracted one is there extra that i am writing just to make into that form just i'm adding one and subtracting one that's it now what is this 1 by 2 power minus 2 is this 4 this is minus 1 4 minus 1 3 is the answer that means to get at least one head and one tail you require on an average you require three tosses since it is a fair coin uh, have you understood my others other than benty uh, have you understood uh, fine uh, thank you we'll move on to the another question uh, it is also asked by some other student so this question is given in uh, gate 2014 can you explain again briefly sir Gopinath. Yeah, fine. So, uh, somebody has asked to briefly explain it. Let me go through it once. So, the question is as follows: A fair fair coin is tossed repeatedly till both the uh, head and tail appear at least once. So, the average number of tosses required. That means you take a fair coin. Fair coin means probability of head equal to probability of tail equal to 1 by 2 half probability equal probability head and tail now you have to toss it repeatedly until at least once both head and tail comes that means when you are tossing first time second time third time fourth time you should get head it and it followed by a tail or tail followed by head that's what we required so we need to find out the average number of tosses required how many number of tosses required let's say let us say somebody is in a class 10 students are there each one is given a given a fair coin the first person tossed the first person when he tossed immediately everybody is given like tossing till he get a head and tail something like that first person tossed he got head and tail immediately the second person tossed he got head head followed by tail the third person tossed head 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 followed by tail that means till a head and tail you get you need to do it some fourth person tossed he got a tail and head some fifth person tossed tail tail followed by head like that that means there is no guarantee that in two tosses we will get uh, the required number of the required event head followed by tail or tail followed by head so that's why we need to find out the expected one since it's a random quantity we need to find out the average number of tosses required that's what that is the expectation so sigma x into p of x okay so what is x here x is the number of tosses required p of x is the probability so this may be possible head followed by tail you may first you, you tossed it you got a head then followed by tail or else two times head you got followed by tail or three times head followed by tail like that that means these are the number of tosses and this is the probabilities for first head 1 by 2 probability then tail 1 by 2 probability like that or else there is another case tail followed by head also you may get so these are the possibilities okay now what you need to find out the expectation average what is the average means what generally you know right a uh, total by number right that is the average right in generally in uh, random variables and all how we give the expectation sigma x into probability right probability of x that means number of tosses into what is the probability to get that many tosses in a, in that way we will do so the this one and this one both are same equal so that's why two times of i am writing that's it first one 2 into p of x 1 by 2 square 3 into what p of x 1 by 3 cube 4 into 
1 by 2 power 4 like that. So, for this I simplified using some this one non result you got the average number of tosses 3. Is that clear? Fine, we will move on to the next question. So, here the question is let x1, x2, x3 be independent and identically distributed random variables. Okay with the uniform distribution on 0 and 1 the probability of x1 is the largest is so we have three random variables x1 x2 and x3 they are iid independent and identically distributed that means independent means x the what to say the x value doesn't depend on y value it's like let's say uh, independent you have one coin and another coin another maybe dice you have i'm throwing them so let us say they are independent and identically distributed that means what is the outcome of coin either head or tail and the dice may be outcomes 1 2 3 4 5 6 they are independent one doesn't depend on the other that's why uh, that's how here x1 x2 x3 are independent and identically distributed random variables with uniform distribution 0 and 1 you know uniform distribution if this is x then this is continuous random variable right f x of x this is pdf it is uniformly distributed between 0 to 1 you might know different distribution uniform distribution Gaussian distribution, Poisson distribution like that. Okay. The area should be 1, right? It's uniform, it's constant between 0 and 1. So to make area 1, what is the height here? This one, y value should be 1. So all three are independent and identically distributed like this. x1, x2, x3. Now what they are asking is, what is the probability that x1 is the largest? See, all three are independent and identically distributed. Three are there, all are uniform random variables. Then there may be a case that x1 may be highest, largest, or x2 may be largest, or x3 may be largest, right? These three possibilities also will be there. Generally, these three will happen with equal probable. Here, what is the what is the meaning here? That means x may take, x1 may take values from 0 to 1. That means 0, 1, 2, 3 like that. Between 0 and 1, any value x1 may take. Similarly, x2 also may take any value between 0 and 1. x3 also takes. What they are asking, what is the probability that x1 should be largest than the other two? and x2 x3 can be small now one case is x1 may be largest and other two may be small another case is x2 may be largest other two may be small and x3 may be largest other three uh, two may be small so that's why clearly we can directly we can say what is it? with equiprobable x1 may be largest x2 may be largest x3 may be largest that means with one by three probability x1 will be largest okay it's equiprobable right all are independent identically distributed and all are uniformly random variables in 0 to 1 that means more or less like with equiprobable that will happen x1 may be largest or x2 may be largest or x3 may be largest that means you can say 33 percent of the cases x1 is largest other 33 percent of cases x2 remaining 33 percent x3 is the largest you got it right so the answer is 0.33 something something like this is that okay fine now in the same year, this was given in gate 2014 uh, in set 1. In the same year, similar question was given in set 2. 
that also asked by one of uh, uh, your friends so this one let x1 x2 x3 be independent and identically distributed random variables with uniform distribution on x uh, on 0 comma 1 similar one they have given all three are independent and identically uh, distributed random variables on 0 and 1 if this is x then this is fx of x like that x1 x2 x3 all will have similar ones then what is the probability that x1 plus x2 less than or equal to x3 this we need to find out this is little bit tricky and uh, some other results you need to use let us see you may know i i hope you have studied those uh, results in random variables and random process uh, that is okay now this can i write like this probability of the given question can i write like this x1 plus x2 minus x3 less than or equal to 0 can i write like this okay the given question i can write x3 you bring left side of the inequality x1 plus x2 minus x3 less than or equal to 0 if you consider z equal to this let z equal to this one z is a random variable okay now x1 is a random variable x2 is a random variable x3 also a random variable sum or difference of two random variables is also a random variable that you know right so z is let z is x1 plus x2 minus x3 so z is also a random variables let z is also random variable why because the addition or subtraction of two random variables is also a random variable that means this is nothing but our question became what probability of z less than or equal to zero probability of z less than or equal to zero so we know the pdf's probability distribution function of x1 x2 x3 we know so uniform distribution all have similar pdf right this is the pdf they have given uniform distribution now if x1 pdf we know x2 pdf we know x3 pdf we know if somehow if we can find out pdf of z pdf of z that means what f z of z then this we can find out right this you know right if you know the pdf probability of z less than or equal to 0 how can i write integral minus infinity to up to 0 f z of z dz this you know or not right suppose i have let us say x is some random variable uniformly distributed like this maybe minus 0.25 to 0.75 okay let us say y is a random variable its pdf is given like this okay uh, now i want what is the probability that y greater than or equal to what is the probability that uh, sorry y less than or equal to let us say 0.5 this i want that means somewhere here you have 0.5 now why what i need is what is the probability that y falls in this region that means 0.5 to minus 0.25 what is the probability that y less than or equal to 0.5 that means if you find the area under the curve or pdf in this region then you will get the uh, the probability that means if i integrate from minus infinity to 0.5 i want from till 0.5 only f y of y then i will get the probability but here y is varying from minus 0.25 to uh, 
up from point 25 only otherwise it is zero this is one dy to find out this one with 0.75 probability the y will be less than 0.5 similarly in the similar way for this if you know somehow if we can find out the pdf of z fz of z then if we can find out the integration then what you get is nothing but the required one okay fine now you might have studied in your random variables course i'll just give the hint maybe later you can try suppose some random variable let us say let z is a random variable x plus y okay and let us say x pdf is probability density function is fx of x and y pdf is probability density function is fy of y then z pdf we want fz of z we want to find out okay if z equal to x plus y then if z equal to x plus y the pdf of the resultant random variables fz of z is nothing but the convolution of individual pdfs this uh, might have proven in your uh, class i don't want to prove now because it will take some time okay so fz of z is nothing but fx of x convolution of fx fy of y you got it right okay so what is our z now what is our z z is x1 plus x2 minus x3 now i will find out for this pdf first i will find out let me say this is y now what is y is what x1 plus x2 now what is pdf of y f y of y is convolution of fx1 of x1 convolved by fx2 of x2 okay so convolution anyway you know since both are uniformly distributed between 0 and 1 this is fx1 this convolution by fx2 convolution now you know right convolution of two rectangular pulses is what is nothing but a triangle you will get you might have seen right how to do convolution and all so this you can express as u of t minus u of t minus 1 right convolved with can i write like this in signals u of t minus u of t minus 1 if you convolve this the limits of convolution also you know you know right lower limits are added and upper limits are added the resultant one what are the lower limits 0 plus 0 less than or equal to here let us say y less than or equal to 1 plus 1 between 0 and 2 are the limits okay you will get a triangle like this for this 0 1 2 okay for this one f y of y okay you will get a triangle like this its value is 1 later you can try this is a convolution is very well known one even in laplace domain also you can do now what else required minus x3 you have to do so i can write now z equal to y minus x3 now x3 as pdf we know what is the pdf of minus x3 this you can do convolution uh, what to say instead of x3 pdf you can find out minus x pdf pdf of minus x3 can I write like this PDF of minus f x3 minus 1 to 0 
can i write like this yes or no x3 is 0 to 1 minus x3 is from here to here now f z of z will be what convolution of its pdf and convolution of its pdf that means basically i am writing like this y plus of minus x3 i am writing that's it so convolution of okay so something like this if you do the convolution 0 1 2 its value is 1 and convolved with this one either you can convert into laplace domain or anything else you can do okay and uh, yeah this convolution you know right how to do this that you can let us see common axis i'm giving this is t because in signals you are very well uh, uh, of doing this convolution right instead of z i am placing just a t so so that uh, it's very easy for us to do the convolution now what is the convolved signal you know right equal to x of tau convolved with h of x of t convolved with h of t is what minus infinity to infinity x of tau h of t minus tau d tau in this way you need to do but what is the required quantity for us no need to find out the entire convolution only we need to if we need to ideally what we will get after doing this convolution we will get f z of z we will get here instead of t z you can write okay but why i am writing t means we know very well in, in signals we have studied that's why i am writing t this is nothing but what minus infinity to zero f z of z dz but if you see here what are the limits for this convolution what are the limits for this convolution can somebody tell me lower limits are added and upper limits are added what is the lower limit here for the first case 0 and for this signal minus 1 so 0 plus minus 1 less than or equal to z less than or equal to what are the upper limits 2 here 0 2 plus 0 that means minus 1 less than or equal to z less than or equal to 2. That means the resultant or oh, the required result is minus 1 to 0 minus infinity not there minus 1 because we, we already know the limits f z of z dz. Okay. So this you need to find out the PDF you need to find out somehow so minus 1 0 and 1 and 2 something like this you will get later you can find out convolution i'm not sure i did not solve entirely something like this you'll get okay something like this you'll get okay this equation that means you know right how to do convolution for each interval you know right hope you know a convolution procedure or else you can convert into laplace one uh, laplace domain then inverse laplace transform you can apply then also you'll get it. you will get something like this roughly i'm writing i did not calculate for all okay in this interval the equation of this curve is something like this you'll get z plus one whole square by two okay see that after convolution you will you will have limits from minus 1 to 2 so and depending on this it will change everywhere the same will not continue let us see here of convolutions here what is the equation here this one 
t plus 1 right and after 1 its equation is what minus t minus 1 i guess right what is this equation something like this minus t minus 1 or something like this minus sorry this equation is t and its equation is minus t minus 1 so like that everywhere convolution the equation will not be same so in this interval the equation will be something like this z plus 1 whole square by 2 okay so you if you know this that is enough in this interval you will get something else and in this interval you will get something else but in exam only if this if you know that is enough so what you get minus 1 to 0 z plus 1 whole square by 2 dz what is the integration 1 by 2 minus 1 to 0 z plus 1 whole cube by 3 dz is 1 by 6 into 1 by 6 into 1 minus 0. This is 1 by 6 you will get. Something 1 by 6 is what? Point, point, uh, 1, 6, 6, something like this you will get. Have you understood? Or you want me to explain how to do the convolution also? It takes quite long time. That's why I'm not explaining. How to calculate the equation? So have you done convolution? Uh, that uh, LTI systems, we will see the conv convolution, right? Ah, that's what. In LTI systems, you will see the convolution, right? Uh, from there onwards, you have to do. So generally, how we will do convolution? So, in terms of T, I am writing for simplicity 0, 2, 1. Okay, T axis, T axis, I am writing. So, the limits of convolution are from 0, sorry, mi minus 1 to 2, right? Now, what you will do, what is the convolution? Let us say this is x of t, this is h of t. Then what we will see, what, what is the convolution formula? Minus infinity to plus infinity. X of tau, H of t minus tau, d tau. That means X of tau, you need to calculate. This is X of tau. Uh, X of tau, anyway, the same thing. axis you need to change out right change tau 0 1 2 this is x of tau okay now h of t minus tau how how to get h of t minus tau first you find out h of minus tau then add t to it right h of minus tau is what this one right tau 0 1 sorry 0 1 this is minus t right now add t to t, t to it add t to it some t you can add so t can be positive or negative so i am just adding t to it so this is minus tau right sorry so you will get here g1 plus t 
एंड जीरो प्लस टी ये टी कैन बी नेगेटिव और पॉजिटिव ओके बिकॉज वी विल गेट द इंटर दीज इंटरवल्स फ्रॉम माइनस वन टू टू नो वॉट यू नीड टू डू यू हैव टू स्लाइड दिस ओवर दिस यू हैव टू स्लाइड दिस वन ओके यू हैव टू स्लाइड दिस वन ओवर एक्स ऑफ टव दिस इज हेच ऑफ टी माइनस टव ओवर दिस वन एंड फॉर ईच इंटरवल यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट वन केस इज माइनस वन लेस देन आर इक्वल टू टी लेस देन आर इक्वल टू जीरो इन दैट केस वॉट विल हैपन माइनस वन लेस देन आर इक्वल टू टी लेस देन आर इक्वल टू जीरो दैट मीन समथिंग लाइक दिस इट विल बी समथिंग लाइक दिस इट विल बी टी इज नेगेटिव राइट देन द कामन एरिया यू नीड टू फाइंड आउट for these two the common area you need to find out this one and maybe somewhere this one and you have to integrate it like that similarly 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 1 again 1 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 2 like in different uh, once different equations you will get Based on that, you will get. Okay, this is in time domain. Typically, we will do in LTA system. Or else, you can do in lab plus one. Can I write this one? Can I write this uh, this one like this? The x of t. Can I write the first one? R of t, r of t minus two r of t minus one. Plus R of t minus two. R means ramp. Can I write the first equation like this? Yes. With one slope, it is going. That means it is t into u of t, right? T into u of t. That means there is nothing but R of t ramp. Then here slope is. One suddenly it became minus one. That means slope is one here. Suddenly became minus one means you have to subtract two slope from this. Then only that's why I'm I'm writing minus two r of t minus one. Then here with minus one slope it is coming down. Suddenly here became slope zero. That means you need to add one slope. R of t minus two, t minus two one. Why I am writing means time shifting version. This is the first signal, and the second signal how I can write convolution with second signal is what this one. This one right? U of t plus one. Okay. Uh, minus u of zero. Sorry, u of t. This is how we will explain this rectangular one, right? Okay, u of t plus one u minus u of t. Now you can find out the convolution, or else in time domain direct, or else you can find out Laplace in Laplace domain. You can find out just I am finding out the Laplace transform. Then I'll find out the inverse Laplace transform. Okay, so for the Laplace transform for R of t, one by s square. Then minus two by s square into time shifted version e power minus s plus one by s square into e power minus two into Laplace domain product it will become uh, this will be what u one by s u of t what is the Laplace transform one by s into e power plus s minus one by s okay now. Just uh, you multiply both the sides, one by s cube, uh, something like this. You'll get e power s, okay? E power plus s minus three um, e power minus two s, na? Uh, something like this. You'll get. 
uh, here e power once and plus two plus three e power something like this you'll get minus one e power minus two s yes, something you'll get okay now you can take inverse laplace transform for this if you take inverse laplace transform e first one first time you take e power s plus s by s square what is the inverse laplace transform for this r of t plus 1 right yes sir no r of t plus 1 but extra 1 by s is there right 1 by s you know right if you have s into x of s means what differentiation for integration you will get 1 by s that means it is integration of r of t plus 1 you got these uh, uh, rules right so dx of t by dt what is the laplace transform s into x of s integration of x of t what is the laplace transfer of line writing 1 by s into x of s here similarly it is there na? that means r of t means what t plus 1 right right so for this you need to take integration t plus 1 integration you need to take okay now so what you get integration if you take t plus 1 square by 2 only that that is enough because e power plus means it is starting from 0 actually sorry minus 1 this is enough for us till 0 we want the next term where it is coming if you see minus 3 into e power 0 that means at t equal to 0 it is coming the next term is where it is coming at t equal to plus 1 the next term is at t equal to plus 2 that's why if i find out this one inverse laplace transform that is enough what i got t plus 1 whole square by 2 instead of t you replace z to z plus 1 whole square by 2 right this is what I, I, I wrote, right? Anyway, you can do. Is it clear? What about others? Either you can do in time domain or Laplace domain, anything is okay. You no need to find out everything. See, if you see, maybe properly I am not simplified, but e, e power plus s. Yes. That means if you inverse Laplace transform, if you take, it will start from minus 1. Then e power 0, it will start from here e power minus it, it will transform from plus 1, e power minus 2 is start from plus 2. That means only if I can find out the inverse tra Laplace transform for this, that is enough, e power plus s by s cube. This for this r of t plus 1 ram, 1 by s is there, that's why integration. Since I want only in minus 1 to 0, this equation is enough for me minus 1 to 0 z plus 1 or t plus 1 whole square by 2 dz this is what we got uh, fine if you are willing i can solve one more pro one more problem we have three minutes if you are willing i can solve or else we will go we can move on to the Next session. Fine. And this question also asked by one of you. You can see the question here. This is given in gate 2006. It's actually a very simple question. You can see a 4 bit DAC D to A converter is given connected to a free running 3 bit up counter. Free running 3 bit up counter means what? Up counter, you know, right? Free running clock pulses continuously comes and the counter value increases. Okay. 
as shown in the figure following figure which one of the following waveforms will be observed at v naught okay let us say here uh, they said delta t represent the uh, ground okay fine so that you know counter you know right hope you know the basics behind this from there uh, quickly i'll solve this now it's a counter up counter three bit up counter means what we have three bits q2 q1 and q0 okay when you are applying a clock pulse each time the uh, the count will increase let us say you are at 000 for a counter okay you applied first clock pulse then it will become 001 second clock pulse you apply it become 010 third clock pulse you apply 011 that means you know right the counter counts the number of clock pulses appearing at the clock input like the fourth clock pulse fifth sixth seventh eighth then zero sorry one zero zero one zero one 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 zero triple one and finally when you apply eighth clock pulse what will happen again it will go back to zero right counter always G zero to two power n minus one, it will count and go back. Then zero zero zero. Ninth clock pulse. Then zero zero one. Now it is connected to a DAC, digital to analog converter. This entire setup is a DAC, and this is some some amplifier which will amplify the what to say, amplify the DAC on output. okay now in the dac if you see d2 is fixed to ground so qt is connected to d3 q1 is connected to d1 q0 is connected to d2 d2 is connected to ground now for dac i am writing d3 d2 d1 d0 so for dac d2 is always zero connected to ground q2 becomes D three Q one becomes sorry Q one becomes D one and Q not becomes T not. Okay, now what will happen? D two is always zero. Now, just these values will come here. Q two will come here. Zero zero zero. Again, Q two will come here zero. Q one will come here zero one. Like that, we will get zero one zero zero one one. Next is one zero zero one zero one 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 zero one one one. Again zero zero zero. After that, zero 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 one. You got it right. Let us say step size is one volt. I would say the step size of DAC is one volt. I am assuming one volt. So what will be the output? What is the DAC output? What is the digital to analog converter? You will give some bits. Digital input some D three, D two, D one, D not. It will give the corresponding analog output voltage, right? Obviously, okay. Now step size is one. Then what is the output here? Zero into the step size, resolution of step size. Output is zero volts. The second case, one into step size, one volt. Third case, two into step size, two volts. Then three into step size, three volts. Four into step size, four volts. Then after four, this one you see nine, because Five you won't get nine you'll get DAC that uh, D two is fixed to zero now it's a four bit DAC actually that's why this is what nine volts then after that ten volts after that eleven volts after that again zero volts again one volts you got it right how the DAC output voltage changes if I draw this 
how it will come starting with zero volts step size one by one i am increasing first it will become one then second, second clock pulse it will become two third clock pulse it will become three fourth clock pulse it will become four fifth clock pulse it will become nine suddenly it will become nine okay sixth clock pulse it will become 10 so here 4 to 9 5 volts increasing next clock pulse 11 next clock pulse 0 next this will repeat next clock pulse 1 2 3 4 then becomes 9 9 like this okay you got it right this will repeat the counter again and again repeats something like this so if you see the options the first option is wrong the third option also wrong fourth option also wrong only option possible is b option b you see here just i am zooming it okay let us say here at zero become zero one two three then increases how many increased see sorry this is eight i wrote wrong here you can see zero one two three this is eight sorry this is eight then nine ten eleven followed by zero and one that means it will become After 3, it will become 8. 8, 9, 10, 11, like that. Okay. Uh, this one you can see. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, followed by 0, 1, 2. This is repeating. This is the option. Uh, is that okay? Uh, anybody is having any other doubts if you have any doubts you can stay back otherwise you can join the next session okay thank you Harpresa. so as i said earlier also i said you can if you have any doubts i'll select some questions i'll teach but before that, if you have any doubts, you can send. I think last two classes I am teaching the doubts only. So you can mail to this mail ID W19 R E S C H double one double zero four at the rate IATH dot AC dot in. This is me my uh, mail ID. The doubts you can mail NPTEL gate. okay doubts something like that topics or something you can keep with that subject keep this as subject and pretty i'll get the doubts if you are asking some question better you mention from which year which question number that you mentioned suppose if you are ask, asking previous year uh, questions then question number you can mention and which year year also you can mention possible set also okay fine uh, if you don't have doubts so we can stop here uh, but it's already time we will see in the next class okay it's i think seven five yeah i i, I will just like i have noted down all your questions one is on dac right i guess uh, something this one right this one and another one is this one, right? We'll see in the next class, okay? Fine. If you don't have any doubts, I'm just closing the meeting here. Thank you, Art. Thank you very much.